Ik ben Peter Gonta. Uh, ik woon in Jakarta. En uh, ik ben een businessman. Nou, ik ben in 1968, heeft mijn moeder, heeft, uh, mijn moeder mij naar Nederland gestuurd. Want ze vertrouwde het niet uh, hier in Indonesië. Ik, uh, ik zat uh, met de verkeerde mensen misschien uh, uh, in een groep. In 1975 ben ik teruggekomen naar Indonesië. En er waren behoorlijk veel mogelijkheden. Dus er waren zoveel projecten. En ik deed dus mee in die projecten. Ik wilde ook maar mijn deal met de, mijn werkgever, zo so, 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 uh, so te zeggen, is... I'll build the project, you give me a little uh, share. So, the company became bigger. I was on the board of Nestle. I was on the board of Mercedes-Benz. But it's not because I'm good. I think there was not enough competition for me. And I was there at the right time, in the right place. De Java Jazz is natuurlijk voor Indonesië is ons een trots. Hè? Dit is misschien het enigste evenement waar eigenlijk uh, Singaporeans en Malaysians en Dutch en uh, Australian en Japanese come just to Jakarta, just to see what Java Jazz is all about. We have here three jazz legends on the same stage. What about that? What about the big hand? Uh, uh, you guys have really built something very special here. Uh, as far as I can see, this is probably the largest jazz festival in the world today that I can see with the greatest musicians. And I salute you guys. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I plan to come back as much as you'll have me. What you think, Dave? <laughs> Java Jazz is eigenlijk een kopie van het Noordzee Jazz Festival. Het is nog een beetje, een beetje groter geworden vanwege de economie. De Indonesische economie die is uh, heel groot. Die is nou, we zijn nu de 16e grootste economie in de wereld. We worden misschien de 8e grootste economie in de wereld in 2019. Ik denk dat Indonesië nu is een tijd wat we call it is de golden era van de economie van Indonesië. Uh, one is because is our status of demographic yeah, is a lot of a productive people, more productive people than unproductive people. So because of that is actually we had a lot of capacity to collect a lot of national saving. So with this regard is actually the money what we can got is actually we can invest to make it our economic growing. As we know, Asia is going through a, a major transformation, both the physical transformation as well as the social transformation. Right at the center of Southeast Asia is Indonesia, the largest uh, country in this region. And we have just seen tremendous growth over the last 30 years. And yet we are just now th at the beginning of what we call the golden era, the next 10 years, where the dependency will go further down that's just going to create a very young population, pop a young population that will be spending, that will be consuming, uh, and will spur investments and the manufacturing sector, not just in Jakarta, but all over Indonesia. We're just so excited about it. Uh, in our businesses, uh, in the retailing, in the healthcare, in the real estate, in the building the homes and the malls, uh, we're just seeing such tremendous uh, growth in demand for infrastructure and for services. Kijk, dit zijn namelijk de mogelijkheden voor uh, landen net als Nederland en Frankrijk en Duitsland en Amerika en Japan. De infrastructure, this, this is a very big thing. Het uh, probleem is, there is so much money in the Indonesian system. There is like 40, 50 billion cash in the banks that is not being employed. Slowly, they need to get back and employ that money for infrastructure. Yeah, I know that, for example, Holland is uh, planning and working together to make this whole Andeike in, in North, 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 North Jakarta um, uh, to control floods and all that. Uh, Indonesia does not have an infrastructure. I think for us, the challenge is the infrastructure. That means government should, you know, uh, is building right now 
airports, uh, I mean, making longer runways and all these things. And government has already embarked to that, what they call this MP3IE, the Master Plan of the Economic Growth until mm -hmm. 2025. For us in Garuda, we are also preparing that by adding more fleets, you know. Right now we have 94 aircraft. By 2015, we are shooting for 194 aircraft. So we're really having all this aggressive and but very uh, calculated in terms of our growth, in terms of uh, obtaining, taking advantage of the Indonesian economy growth. About five years ago, I guess uh, most people saying that Indonesia is lag behind uh, because of the inability of infrastructure to cope with the demand. But starting this year, uh, especially the, in on the air transportation, we are going to see a lot of improvement. For example, this year alone, we, we will have uh, three of the largest airports being inaugurated, being opened. Uh, for, uh, the first one is on the western part, the Medan Airport Kuala Namu. Second one is on the uh, Denpasar, the Bali one, uh, because Bali is going to have a facelift, totally new kind of face of the, the airport system. And then also the Balikpapan, the oil-rich regions. So these are part of all the new airports that we are going to open this year. What we need is people that can do uh, uh, R&D in, in electronics, R&D in atomic industry, R&D in what have you, anything that is has to do with uh, te technology. I think that's very important. Unless we have that, we will continue to be a country that will only consume and only export raw material. Corruption, you can see now, you know, heads of uh, uh, chairmen of political parties go to jail, ministers go to jail. So people started to, you know, hey, listen, we cannot be corrupt all the time. So Indonesia is improving in that respect. And I think all in all, all together, you know, with the current government, Indonesia has really improved in many aspects. Wij geloven hier, en ik geloof er ook in, dat dit de democratie het punt is van a boiling economy. If you have democracy, you know, your economy will actually flourish. If you have autocracy, then everybody is afraid to do things. Now, democracy is not only about talking. Democracy is also about doing things. So, Indonesians have become very much more proactive. We are a very young democracy. But because of that, our economy has been growing. Indonesia was the only country in the world that has a 6.2% growth in the last two years, where all the other countries were actually uh, having a setback. Now, even if the world is having a problem, because of what Indonesia has learned from the previous crisis in 1998, uh, the Indonesian domestic economy itself is so big. The number of islands, the number of people, the number of uh, communication needs, the number of transportation needs, the number of infrastructural needs, food, the number of uh, clothing, everything that Indonesia needs day in, day out, is produced in Indonesia. So the local economy alone is flourishing, even if the world goes bust. Now we have a good domestic economy. There is a lot of demand for Indonesian resources. So the country does not have uh, uh, any option other than moving forward. Even if our local economy is bad, then we can rely on our export of natural resources. As you know, uh, you, you covered me when we had the signing ceremony at the Ministry of Trade, where Indonesia is finally saying, hey, if we want to do something in trade, we must make sure that the shipping part is going to be taken by Indonesia as well. Because that's another 14, 15, 16 billion dollars every year that we spend on shipping. So shipping industry needs to come. Uh, but you need capital, you know, so they need employ money to actually finance the shipping industry. The golden era, I believe, between today and the year 2025, 23, there is so much that Indonesia can do, will do, will build. Uh, to the foreigners and to the Dutch and, and any, any foreigner, uh, I would say, uh, be there. Don't miss the train.